Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to look at how to process third-party payments in Xero. Now, when I talk about third-party payments, what I'm referring to is when you use an outside party to process a payment into your bank account. This might be PayPal, it might be Square or someone like that. So basically, you might be using these third parties as a means for your customer to pay by credit card or to pay by FPOS on your little handheld device that you take to them. Um, they you know, scan their card like they do with normal FPOS and then it comes through to your bank via PayPal or Square or whoever you're using, much like FPOS would work. So what would normally happen in this instance is you would receive a little bit less than what you're expecting because there is a payment fee. Um, levied by the third party. So you might add this on top of your invoice amount so that if you have an invoice, say, let's look at an invoice here. I created this earlier. Alan Williams is a contact that is already in the demo file. Um, so we've got here services provided on the 13th of August for $210. So what you might do um, is you might, if you know the PayPal or the Square fee or whatever it may be is say $5, you might add $5 onto the invoice so you still get your full amount. But in many cases, it might be coming off your invoice if you're not passing it on. That depends on how you're working your system. So what we're gonna do here is just say that we're not passing the fees on to the customer, so the customer is still only paying 210 and then the, we're copying the fees on our side. So what would happen in this instance, we've got this money that came in here on the 13th of August, $200. Um, let's just say it relates to this invoice here, 1044, which was for $210, but only 200 has came in. So there's a $10 fee that's been levied by PayPal or Square or whoever you're using. So what we're going to do, we're going to go find and match. And we know it's this invoice 1044 here, so we're going to do a search on that. There it is, so we'll select that. And you might have noticed guys that recently Zero have changed the view here in the bank rec all the functionality is basically the same but it's a lot more zoomed in and a lot more blown up and requires a lot more scrolling i find i actually don't like it myself i'd be interested to see what you guys think i liked it in the old view before when it was a little bit more zoomed out and you could see a bit more of what's going on without having to scroll up and down all the time but anyway so we've got 210 dollars here matched and we know the invoice was for 210, but we only received 200. So we can see down the bottom here, the total is out by $10 and that relates to fees. So what we need to do, we need to make an adjustment and we're gonna go bank fee. So let's say we're using PayPal. So we're just gonna say PayPal fees and we're gonna put that to bank fees. Now what you could also do is have a separate account called PayPal fees. If you wanna split your PayPal fees out from regular bank fees, you can do that as well. And we're gonna say in this instance, it's GST free. And we'll put in the amount for $10. And then we can reconcile. That's it, it's done. So that's how you can match off your invoices that have been created here and then paid via PayPal or Square or someone like that. But if you're not raising invoices, you might wanna, or you might have to do, depending on how you're running your books, if you're not running it through the invoice register, you might wanna do a receive money. In that case, you're going to have to go here. We know it's Alan Williams, just say. And it was, this is if this invoice didn't exist and we're just going direct through the receive money while ignoring the invoice register. So if this invoice didn't exist here, we'd have to put it to a revenue account. And 
and we'll just put it to sales. And you might put a description in here. Now this would be the quick and easy way of doing it, but if in fact we knew the sale was for $210, a problem that may arise here of just putting the whole amount to sales, the net amount for 200, even though the original sales were 210, there's a couple of issues here. One would be if your sales have GST, but your PayPal fees do not have GST, then your GST amount's gonna be incorrect because there would be GST on the 210 income, but the 10 would be GST free. So you really need to split that out to get your GST correct. The other thing you might wanna look at is if you are booking a sale for 210 and your bank fees happen to be 10 on it, you probably wanna know exactly how much your sales are on your P&L and how much your bank fees are on your P&L. Um, so you might change payment providers. You might go from PayPal to someone else who has lower fees. So you wanna be see how much you're paying in fees to know how much you're losing in fees. Um, so it's good to split it out from a business perspective like that so you can get full overview of how much your sales really are and how much your fees really are just so you really know what's going on there. The other thing is from an ATO perspective, you really should be booking the full amount as revenue so that they have an accurate view on your turnover because they'll want to know the full amount, not the net amount. They'll want to know the 210, not the 200. So really what you should be doing, guys, is going add details if you're using the receive money and it's not through the invoice register. And you'd go 210 here to sales. And then you go minus 10 to bank fees. GST free, but if you're using, if this is for PayPal or for Square, you got to check with them because if it's more of a merchant fee on their end, it might be GST on expenses, but that's something you need to check. But for this example, we'll just leave it as GST free and then you would go save transaction and reconcile. So that's pretty much how you do it, guys. There's not too much to it. Um, I mean, what you could also do is you could, um, if you're getting a lot of these come through and you know that, say, PayPal always levies a 5% fee, you could set up a bank rule and say the first 5% goes to bank fees and the balance goes to sales. That's something you could do to automate this. If you're getting a lot of them come through every day, then you might look at doing that. And that way you know you're getting your revenue on the books at the full amount, the gross amount, as it should be for the ATO, for you, um, but you're also getting your GST correct. That's another thing you can do. One thing I will note as well, if you're using Square um, as a more of a... Uh, uh, rather than a payment gateway, but also as booking the sale as such. So you're not raising an invoice in zero. You're pretty much just booking an on-the-spot sale in Square. Square can link to zero and automate um, a journal that feeds through to zero based on the way you set it up in Square um, for what accounts you're going to use and so forth. So you can book the sale in Square and it can feed through an automatic journal into zero um, to basically get it on the books in zero with the correct GST codes and the correct account codes and all of that. That is not something you would use for an instance where you're just using zero, I mean, sorry, square merely as a payment gateway to pay an existing invoice in zero. You wouldn't use it for that, but if there wasn't an in in existing invoice in zero and you're booking the sale on the spot in square, then you can uh, link it up to zero and have it come through automatically. So I hope that helped out a little bit, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If there's anything I haven't quite covered or if I've missed here, please let me know and I'll try to address it in a new video. But um, if you have any questions or things you'd like me to cover, um, hit me up in the comments section and we'll see what we can do to, to um, make a video and um, you know keep everyone moving along. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.